श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा श्री कृष्णा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम हरिओ तत्सद्भगवद्गीता सेकेंड चैप्टर सांख्य योगम श्लोका नंबर फोर्टीन श्री भगवाच मात्रास्पर्शास्तु कौंते शीतोष्णसुख दुखदा आगमापाइनो निस्वारत इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव कंप्लीटेड अप टू दिस फोर्टीन श्लोका in this chapter bhagwan shri krishna's the teaching started from the 11th shloka onwards the philosophical teaching by teaching which by knowing which arjuna permanently can come out of his delusion and the fear and the sorrow so for that sake lord started teaching the highest knowledge the brahma vidya or atma gnanam he started in the 11th shloka first by saying that hey pandava hey arjuna the wise people never grieve for the people who have already passed away or who are going to leave this world who are dead or who are going to die the wise people never grieve for them but you are grieving and you are talking like a wise person so that means you are not wise if you are a wise you never grieve so like that bhagavan started telling about the who are all already departed are going to depart wise people never grieve then the doubt may come what is that how come we can be without grieving for those people uh, who who has already gone or going to die How is it possible? Kutahate asuchaham. How come we be without grieving to those people? Because they are nityaha. Yataha nityaha. <clears throat> they are eternal. They never die. How come? Katham. then bhagwan giving the answer to this anticipated question look here whether me or you or those kings who are all standing in front of you in the war war field there is no time that when they were not there and when there won't be a time when they are not going to be there that means they are always there they are always there so this is lord said that means in the swarupa as the absolute reality the atma we are eternal nityaha <clears throat> atma nityaha but lord didn't use that word nityaha by saying this shloka natve vaham jatunasam all that it is understood that there is no time there won't be a time such 
either me or you or they were not going to exist or not going to be existed. So, that means uh, beyond the time, past, present and future, <clears throat> we are always uh, living. But in what form? In the form of the consciousness or the Atma. Not body wise. Body, all the bodies will die. Everybody knows that. So, Bhagavan wants to say that inner essence of everybody that is Nityam. That's why you need not to grieve for their death of their bodies. Then Bhagavan wants to give an example and make this point to understand. Then in the 13th shloka, look here, as it, uh, as we know all, in this body, <coughs> everybody's body, the different stages we uh, go through, Balya Avastha, Kishora Avastha, Yavvan Avastha, and uh, Vruddhapyam and all that. So, in the same way, but in and through in all these stages, I exist. I, the Dehi, the resident of this body, I exist. But body only going through the changes. And in the same way, after some time the body dies, and takes the another, the Dehi will take another body. So, it is also a kind of change as the childhood, as the youth and as the old age, a changes has taken place. So, the death is also is another change, that's all. But I continue to exist. So, by telling this, Lord wants to prove that this Atma, the embodied, the Dehi, nothing to do with the modifications and changes of the body. That's why I told them, I told you that either any of these bodies, they may disappear, but the essence which is supporting all these bodies that never dies. So that's why it is Nityam. And then, okay, if someone knows that maybe I, 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 I am the Atma, I never die, so Anityaha. But still, in the world, we experience everybody, everybody through their body and mind, they experience the Sukha and Dukha. Inevitable, everybody. Then, um, what to do? Okay, I come to know that as you said, I am the essentially Atma, consciousness, Nityam. But unavoidably, I have to go through the all Sukha and Dukkha, pain and pleasure of this you know, day to day life. So, we are all afraid of that. Even we don't afraid much about the death of the body, but facing the day to day, what kind of uh, sorrow, misery may come. Or if I am having already comfort and the pleasure, this pleasure may go. This kind of fear is there. Constantly, these Sukha Dukkhas are coming and playing, hitting us, taunting us. Then uh, what to do about this? If such question comes for that answer Bhagavan given in this 14th shloka, which we have completed last week, we will just recollect once again. Here see a kaunte Arjuna, matraha, the sense organs, uh, sparshastu, Whenever they come in contact with the, this particular sense object, the eyes, the eyes gets contact with the uh, form and the colors 
and the ears comes in the contact with the sounds like that all sense organs comes under matraha means sense organs sparshastu means sprushante when they get contact with these uh, those re respected objects of them a re uh, respected field of them then what happens they have to experience sita ushna sukha dukha that means all by telling these two pairs of complementaries bhagavan wants to include all the pair of uh, pairs of complementaries pairs of opposites dvandvas they give definitely sukha sita ushna sukha dukha daha they are the givers of the either pleasure or pain now here little let us analyze which gives the pleasure for example the heat in winter season the uh, heat i gives the pleasure to me but in the same the same heat in the summer gives the misery to me so in this way the same thing which given some time back the pleasure and it gives the same thing misery also so you take anything in this way whichever we are saying this is so pleasurable thing to me but after some time after one day or other we'll say this is giving the trouble and misery to me is it not this is the experience of every one of us so if that is the case then what to do what to do so in fact they constantly change the same person same senses same objects sometimes give pleasure sometimes give the displeasure and you know arjuna moreover they are just coming and going they come and go now winter comes winter goes again winter comes winter goes summer comes summer goes again summer will come so in this way day comes and goes then night comes and night goes in the same way everything here whatever we are experiencing in this world through our senses they are all transitory temporary agamaha apayanaha therefore we can say them anityaha so which i talked in the previous shloka about the atma is nityam but the experiences are experienced by this body senses and the mind through the external world objects are they are anityam anitya means uh, i am going through but they are not nityam no now let us connect that nitya atma and anitya these body uh senses mind experiences how when pleasure comes i know i got the pleasure when misery comes i know misery has come so whenever any pain of these complementary comes i know they have come and i know that they have gone so the knower of this arrival and departure of these uh, pairs of complementaries is nityam please listen attentively the whole vedanta scriptural study understanding only through our own experiences we can explore shastra guides guru tells examples and all that so you must be very sensitive alert and to grasp what it may, what it means now to highlight this point i will tell you an example in one railway station one person standing he saw 7 o'clock one train passed away one train came to the onto the platform and it went out then again 8 o'clock also he is standing on the platform 
and he uh, saw the eight o'clock train also came and went off. Then nine o'clock also. Like this, the person who is seeing the three trains coming and going, and he knows that train number one came and went off, train number two went off, came and went off, train number three came and went off. If this person sat in the first train itself, 7 o'clock, and he also went along with the train, can he know the arrival and departure of the second train and the third train? No, he cannot know. Because he is standing apart on the platform, as a witnesser, he is able to know all the arrival and departure of the three trains. Now, take this example and apply to this shloka what Nitya Anitya. I, the consciousness, I, the witnesser, I, the knower, is Nityam. Because I am seeing, no. I am seeing my body is you now. Huh? Engaged body also I experienced, I remember also now. And youth body also I experienced and I remember now. Now I can I see that and experiencing the old body also. So definitely I am something other than the body. I am something other than the body. This is the first principle we have to understand. So Nityam I am, that means consciousness. Awareness or Sakshi, and I am watching all these uh, modifications which comes to this body and mind through different uh, uh, angles from different uh, angles from different senses. Okay, they will come and go. Any misery standing permanently? Any pleasure standing permanently? No. Their nature itself is that, okay, sir, morning onwards I am suffering, sir. I have a very chronic disease, sir. And every day, since so many years, doctor said it cannot be cured. Then, which cannot be cured, you must endure. That is only Lord going to say. But still, there one thing I will tell you. Even though morning to night I know this particular disturbance and disease uh, troubling me, I am going through the pain and um, uh, difficulty. But when you go to sleep, sometime or more, sometimes because of this pain or uh, the disturbance, you may not sleep as you sleep before or others. But sometime you will sleep. You have to sleep. Sleep will come automatically. Now, tell me, in that sleep time, what, where that pain has gone? Pain is there. This is there. But I am not connected to it. So, by seeing this also, observing, somehow I am not connected to them. Why I am telling this example? We may ask that, sir, uh, pleasures comes and goes, sorrows comes and goes. But someone may say that in so many years I am having this problem. But still, sometime or other you will divert your mind and discover something or go to sleep or by taking a you know, medicine also, you will become detached to them. That time you are happy only, no? Anyhow, the point Lord wants to say, they are subject to the arrival and departure. That's why whichever not there before and then comes now and again disappears later, it is called Mithya. That's why it is called Anitya. Anitya means what? It appears, it comes, it stays, show sometime, but disappears. 
But nityam is what? I know the pleasure. I know the misery. Again, 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 I know all the modifications happening in my body, in my mind, in the world. As that person standing on the platform and watching everything. So, in that way, you are Nityam, the witnesser, but the witnessed are keep on changing. And uh, what is the remedy now? What to do? Everybody, without exception in the world, everybody has to undergo this kind of uh, pain and pleasure and pain and pleasure. Then Lord says, only the way is you tolerate. You tolerate. Tam stitikchaswa. Stitikcha means have a patience. Tolerate. Endure. They will just come and go. Don't get identified with them and become more and more miserable. You as a uh, witness or the Sakshi, Nitya Atma, you have no misery at all. Whenever you associate with them only this misery and pain, play, pleasure and pain. So, even pleasure comes also you tolerate because pleasure also, it, it won't stay for a long time. That's why don't expect that and don't have any fear again this pleasure when they go. It will go. Anything, whatever comes has to go. That is the law. And whatever comes and whichever goes, that is anityam. That is called mithya. Tam titikchaswa e bharata. Therefore, tolerate. Accept them. Here, tolerate means accept them. When pleasure comes, you are accepting. Then sorrow also you must accept. Because they travel together, one after another, over uh, overlaps each other. That's why they are called the pairs of complementaries, like uh, the two uh, rail tracks, like the uh, train track. No, they have got two rails like that. Understand this point and but learn to tolerate titiksha. I will tell you the definition given by Vivek uh, Bhagavan Adishankara Acharya in uh, Viveka Chudamani very beautifully. Then only we will understand what exactly titiksha. Somehow I am tolerating by murmuring, hmm, by criticizing, by scolding, by hitting my head. No, that is not a, I am so inner, inside disturbed. I am, somehow I am tolerating. No, tolerate happily. Tolerate peacefully. How come it is possible? So, Shankara says, Sahanam Sarva Dukkhanam. Mainly we have to tell about the Dukkham. Sahanam, patience is required. Sarva Dukkhana, that Dukkha may be a small misery or big misery, it doesn't matter. But how, how to have patience and tolerate? Apratikara Purvakam, don't revolt, don't react and don't take revenge. Apratikara Purvakam, don't react. Then same time, so I am not reacting, I am not taking revenge, I am not uh, replacing by something to that. <laughs> but I am inside, inside heart of my heart, I am so bottled up, I am burning. I am so much worrying inside. That also should not be. Chinta vila paraitam. That means uh, don't express but don't suppress, then 
satitiksha nigadyade if you are not expressing if you are not suppressing but you are able to elevate or sublimate is called titiksha elevate yourself or sublimate how it is possible only thing by knowing that you are nitya you are unattached and unconnected for this continuous changing phenomena so in this way up to this shloka we have seen the meaning in the last class then so lack of patience is the cause for irritation and reaction that irritation reaction uh, leads to the anger then that anger further leads to the uh, himsa destruction so one after another then all the negative emotions will crop up even to get atma gyan also you need patience now you are listening to this geeta and now i am just uh, recapping the previous shlokas and telling you should not feel bored or uh, no when we are going to finish the shlokas that is not only our job let us see the extract the maximum essence uh, in depth of the shlokas and then only we can assimilate them and we can gain derive the benefit of them now let us go to the 15th shloka yam hi na yathayante te purusham purusharshabha samadukha sukham dhiram somrutatvay kalpate okay sir as you said i will try and learn and be tolerate i will have patience and i will tolerate by tolerating like this how long how long and what benefit i will get i will keep on only tolerating tolerating titiksha but what benefit i will get by tolerating this uh, pain and misery what benefit i will get if you have such a question for that hear the answer hey purushar shabha o arjuna a strong among the so many people a strong man purushar shabha sah purusham m that person whom ate these sense organs and the objects na vyathayanti na vyathayanti means they never cannot disturb or na chalayanti they never shakes him they never uh, make him dejected and depressed and na vyathayanti do not disturb because of what how come this disturbance free or disturbance proof we can become because nitya atma darshanat because i know that they are not really related to me they are only in the relative reality which is not uh, nityam and which is uh, anityam by knowing that i am nityam these sukha dukkhas whichever comes and goes because of the sense contacts with the world objects na vyathayanti then na vyathayanti means as already said sama dukha sukham who is able to see this harsha vishada rahitam 
he is not elated and excited because of the pleasure overwhelmed or he is not become so depressed or dejected vishadayana no there is no he is same in pain and pleasure who is same maintaining his equanimous equipoise of the mind same in both the situations of sukha dukkha he is called dhiram bhagavan giving the word he is the wise person here dhira means not bodily strong or body builder not like that <laughs> this dhira word is a very favorite word of the upanishads upanishads will keep on tell many times whoever come into this path and listening to this uh, upanishad gnanam praises upanishad itself praises that he somya he dhira so this dhiram who is uh, not affected by this pains of opposites that person alone here dhira means we have to give wise person intelligent person who is intelligent person who is wise person who knows that uh, what is nitya i am atma nitya and i whatever i through whatever i express and experience they are all anityam and who comes to know this he is called a wise person or an intelligent person and who is a unintelligent person who suffers because of his intelligence you know in this world intelligent people are uh, suffer more intelligently as intelligent person intelligent people have the strong ego and uh, suffering a normal simple ton person never have so dhiram wise person he sanskrit he alone that wise person alone who is able to discriminate this nitya and anitya and what will happen no you asked what benefit he will get amrutatvaya kalpate very crucial word amrutatvaya amrutam means immortality he alone becomes fit for immortality he is only becomes fit for immortality not otherwise because the he alone fit for become uh, becomes immortality means what amrita bhavaya mokshaya samardho bhavati to claim himself that i am the jeevan mukta i am a mukta purusha i am the undecaying vastu mrutam death amrutam where there is no death that amrutam here amrutam means uh, is it is it na is uh, nothing to do with the in swargaloka puranas what amrutam they talk here amrutam means uh, nothing to do with the either swarga or pitruloka or kailasha or vaikuntha amrutatvaya kalpate means he discovers and attains the jivan mukti state while living here and there amrutatvaya kalpate first stage he becomes fit for to establish himself in that self knowledge and here after further he lives like a jivan mukta he is free that is called moksha so amrutatvaya kalpate not otherwise not anybody so you now got the 
answer what benefit you will get you discover that you are the immortal atma after discovering that your nature is nityam and you are free from all the pain and pleasure then dwandvas may you and your body may experience through them but you are free from the body identification so you are free this is called real freedom not anything else so here we need the freedom freedom not for the i please remember this point freedom not for the i i want freedom no if you really understand the vedanta you have to say freedom from i not for i there is a lot of difference for for and from from i this i is actually a pseudo i this i ahankara is a illusion it is a uh, just ka created imagined imagined projected so i am different than this body and mind so so in this way kalpate amrutatvaya please i am free from this body mind complex and i am the nitya atma now after telling this now okay i am able to catch your point but still tolerating this sukha and dukha taking them equally how is it possible and you are telling that atma is nityam to emphasize that atma is the satyam because that is the only satyam which is nityam that is only can be the satyam which is not nityam that cannot be a satyam so second atma's characteristics the swarup of the atma first point is atma nitya now second point atma satya what is the reason because it is nityam then only called satyam let us read the shloka first and we elaborate nasato vidyate bhavah na bhavo vidyate satah ubhayorapi drishtontah tvanayostatva darshibih very very important shloka in whole bhagavad gita there are some shlokas which are called granthi shlokas a naughty knotted shlokas unless you remove that knot you cannot understand what that shloka conveys that means very difficult to understand by seeing the outer word to word simple meaning unless we analyze deeply with the help of the great acharyas bhashyam and all that so they are called grandhi shlokas so this is the first one of grandhi shloka there is a fun episode generally when we talk about the mahabharata they say why this kind of some grandhi shlokas came in between when vyasa started writing composing the mahabharata we know the story he requested the ganesha bhagavan to be as a hmm, scribe to write then shankar ganesh bhagavan agreed i will do that but one condition what you have to tell me continuously without stopping 
without stopping. Then Yashacharya put one more condition, okay, that I will do, but you must uh, write by knowing the meaning of it correctly. By knowing the meaning of it correctly. Is it okay? Yes, I will know, uh, see the meaning also, understood the, understand the meaning and then write. Then whenever Vyasa tells some hundred shlokas, Mahabharata is one lakh shlokas. Bhagavad Gita is the part of the Mahabharata. Then Bhagavan Vyasa has to give some break and he has to think about what next uh, hundred thousand shlokas to compose. Then in between that time when he wants to little break for himself, he used to tell one this kind of Grandi shloka. Then Vinayaka also not able to understand, he is also um, thinking little bit taking little time. Then in that gap of little time, Vyasa again gathers another thousand shlokas. So in this way, they both each other help and did a great work of this Panchamaveda Mahabharata. Okay, that's a new side story. Here, this uh, shloka mainly wants to convey Atma is a Satyam. Sat or Satyam yet trikale api tishthati tat satyam, which is available in the three periods of time. That means nityam. That's why I told if it is not nityam, it cannot be a satyam. So it is so simple because it is nityam that should be the satyam. Now, how to understand? First, I will tell you the simple meaning of this shloka. Then we will analyze it. Okay. Vidyate asataha bhavaha vidyate na. That means there is no existence for the unreal. There is no existence for the unreal. Asataha bhavaha na vidyate. Unreal doesn't have any existence. Then, second, vidyate na abhavaha. Abhavaha na vidyate sataha. For the sat, for the real, uh, there is there is no question of non existence. I will put it in a very simple way still. Real never has got the non existent status. Unreal never have the existence status. Is okay, somewhat something we grasped it. That much okay, let it be. That means whatever we see, it may be looking like existing, no, but there is no guarantee that it is real. We will come to the analysis. Let me complete this. So, whoever knows in this way, okay, antaha. Antaha means uh, nirnayaha. Yes, this is the truth. What? The truth is uh, the real reality is always real. The unreal is always unreal. Still simpler, no? Who knows this, come to this conclusion, Antaha, what? 
आप आने अब उभयो हो अभी आनयो हो आप बोथ ऑफ दिस रियल ऑलवेज एग्जिस्ट अनरियल नेवर एग्जिस्ट तो हु कम्स टू रियल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस टू एंड ही अलोन टू दृष्ट तत्वदर्शि so he is only called tatvadarshi the seer of the reality okay full meaning sentence see here who knows that real is always real it is existing real means what satyam satyam means nityam and the two words you should not forget unreal anityam so asatyam which it doesn't have never have the existence who knows about this two in this way he is called a tatvadarshi he is the seer of the truth really he is the knower of the truth this is the simple meaning of this shloka now acharya sar shankar bhashya tells they do a lot of analysis about this okay whichever is exist whichever is exist can never become non exist whichever is non exist it can never be become exist but here for us doubt comes so you are going to talk about the nitya that is the real that is the satyam but for us anityam asatyam world is experienced it is seen it looks like really existing how you can deny this that's why the point is whatever is experienced by the senses is need not to be real if you see simple two three examples you will understand this point you see the blueness in the sky you experience through your eyes perception directly but is it real you know scientifically it is only an optical illusion blueness is not there in the sky then why it is appearing yes even though it is not existing even though it is unreal but it appears gives the experience to the senses because that is maya that is illusion that is mithya take another example you see the seven colors in the rainbow are they real are they exist really no you cannot prove by any experiment or anything scientifically because now we are very much well educated science is so much advancing so with this all we know it is only a reflection formed and created than illusion but my eyes are experiencing so what because you are sense are experiencing eyes it doesn't mean it is real then it's like that another example generally these are the popular examples is the mirage waters mirage water you know very well there is no water there but your eyes and mind you get the experience of looking there is a water <laughs> but no person intelligent person never go and try or strive for drinking that water because in the intellect he knows that uh, it appearing like a water is there but there is no water but the otherwise non intelligent the animals mruga trishna because when they feel thirst in the desert they run behind that mirage waters and going 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 by thinking that there is a water there is a water they never get the knowledge that 
these mirage waters are an illusion they were not real but not knowing that reality of the mirage water that uh, animal finally walk 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 in the hot sun with thirsty and it would fell and die that is the same case if we are not able to see what is real and what is unreal then we are also caught up in this uh, cycle of uh, birth and death and the body mind complex and thinking that they are only i am and thinking they are real they are real so here this shloka wants us to analyze more and more and more now another analysis deeper because these are the very important shlokas so let us spend some time okay i am the atma that is what we are listening now i am not the body mind complex i am the consciousness i am the nityam and i am the satyam now let us put this particular idea in a simple point wise to make us make it more clear to us appealing to us what what are the real other okay nityam satyam these are the sanskrit words you are telling and you are giving the english meaning also which is uh, satyam uh, real that is only nityam permanent satyam nityam all that okay but uh, still my experience of my mind and my own experience is only with this body now to tell this also i am nityam i am satyam i need this body equipment and very much i am embodied i am having the body so with this body only my transactions and my uh, ambitions my achievements everything even to get the atma gnana with this body mind instrument only now what is the relationship it is a really related it is otherwise it is a relation less relationship we are uh, alert we are going deeper analysis this relationship of me nityam and the uh, uh, anityam my body mind complex what is this relationship how strong it is to understand this it is a relationless relationship now point number 1 i am the consciousness atma is i am a part of this body or product of this body or property of this body if you analyze i nitya satya atma consciousness is not a part of the body not a part of the body because i if i am a part then i cannot be a nityam i cannot be a satyam so i am not a part of okay otherwise i the consciousness is the product of the body because of this body i am or because of me this body because of me and in me this body i am not in the body i am not in the body body is in me so i am not a product also or a property of the body property it is a visheshana of the body no body is jadam body is not there before some time back and body is now is there body won't be there after some time how can me who knows 
the changes of the body. Now, when I'm talking these points, you have to connect to the last four shlokas, what Lord said. It is very clear that I am Nitya, Satya, Atma, Consciousness is not a part or product or the property of the body. Point number one. These are the fundamentals like if you assimilate these things, then it is very easy to go to the next step of analysis. Now, what is the second point? I, the consciousness, Nitya Satya Atma, is independent of this body. Independent of this body, independent entity. That means, uh, I am independent, but I pervades uh, and uh, elevates this body. I illumines, make this body to function, being I am independent. So, I am an independent entity and then pervades through all the body and makes this body conscious and uh, to function. Then, so I am independent. Then, third point is um, this independent uh, identity I am, entity I am, Nityam Satyam, is not a limited because I function, I express through this body, I am not limited by the boundaries of this body, by the boundaries of this body. Because I am expressing through this body, I am expressing only through this body like that I am bounded, this body boundaries limiting me. No, I, the Atma, consciousness is not limited by the boundaries of the body. Clear? Then the fourth point is, this consciousness I, I am, Nitya Satya, continues to exist even after the death of this body. Even this body dies, disappears. I will be there. That's why before this body comes and I express through this body also, I was there. I am now. I will be. So, the body cannot make me limited and so I am beyond the body. That's why even the body disappears. This equipment, Upadi, body, mind, this gets destroyed. We are seeing every body is getting destroyed. So, when that is destroyed, the unreal Anityam Asatyam, I consciousness also, Nityam Satyam get destroyed? No, never. Then finally, fifth point is, okay. So, that means what? I, the consciousness is surviving without the body also. But I am not accessible of the uh, accessible. I am not accessible for interaction because the equipment body mind is not there. Okay? The equipment or upad is called medium. So, when this medium body is not there, there is no medium. So, I, I, have, I have no chance of uh, the <coughs> conscious, I conscious, I survive all the time, but I have no uh, occasion, I have no accessibility for transaction. So, this body and mind complex is a an asset for me to express myself, to transact. But what is happening, we are forgetting that I am beyond the body, beyond the boundaries of the body. I am an individual entity, independent entity. I survive even after the body's death. And I only 
giving the uh, illumining and enlivening this body mind without the body mind also i can exist and i may not be expressing no accessibility but i am there so these are the five important points about the me the consciousness now this is these five points should be now applied should be now applied till to understand we can take the example of the prakasha or akasha just to make these points clear that's it so what is that taking the akasha or prakasha that alone one example today we'll take akasha example now this is the pot this is the body think like that now the body is in the space or space in the pot is in the space or space is in the pot as we told body is in me but i am not in the body okay body is in me like what you know this space so space consciousness i am so example space like uh, consciousness i am is uh, independent independent of the this pot pot space so uh, space is not a product or the property or the part of the pot yeah space is not a part or product or property of the pot uh, then what space is an independent entity which is giving the space to the pot also and uh, inside the pot and outside the pot i pervade and uh, allow the giving the opportunity space to the pot also now because of this uh, pot one is created in the space i the space consciousness becomes limited no i am unlimited these boundaries of the pot cannot make the limitation to the space and if suppose this pot gets broken destroyed but still the space continues to exist even after the destruction of this body this pot okay so see the now examples and that five principles so finally if uh, this shape of this pot is not there i cannot uh, express or uh, become a accessible a useful commodity like a pot on now the pot space if this pot is not there i may not be accessible as the pot space because this this pot space is there accessible it is uh, good for transactional you know i can bring the water in this because inspired space is there so but if, because this pot is got destroyed anything happen to the space no nothing happened space is uh, very much intactly existing as it is now analyze apply these five points just by seeing the outer space and inner space of the hall and wherever you are sitting and tell to yourself i am the consciousness just like the space so god is in me and i am not in the body that means what i am in the body also i am in the outside of the body also 
later that point will come then when this analysis goes more deeper the in and out are meaningless in and out are meaningless what is that how bhagavan is going to tell further all this we will see in the next class om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnamevavasishyate om shanti 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 hari om shri gurubhyo namaha hari om hari om satsang